Hi, I'm Professor Tamara Sten from Landmark College, and I'm here to introduce the Sustainability Lens game to you. This is a game that was created um, where we can make new opportunities for people, basically from any place in life with any kind of enterprise. So you don't need a background in business and sustainability. You don't need to have an enterprise, but if you have any of those things, this game will also be useful for you. So it works both ways. It works for the absolute beginner and also for the expert. So depending on where you are is where you'll get um, new information and ideas from the project. And we have a lot of supports that help you if you're not really sure where to begin. So anyone can make a lemonade, okay? But can anyone make a lemonade that also benefits people, the planet, and regenerates resources? So let's take a look at this. So here we have the Business Model Canvas, which is an open source um, uh, universal design business tool. And what we're seeing with this is the story of the lemonade. Okay, so anyone can make lemonade, here we go. So we have our cross cost structure, which talks about how much it costs to do this. So we're getting a bunch of um, lemonades and cups and people working and ice and even maple syrup, because I'm talking to you from Vermont to USA, where we have a lot of maple syrup. Um, and we take these ingredients and we put them all together using, um, here's our resources. Okay, so these are ingredients. This is our cost of those ingredients. Um, we have a total investment of $325, okay, to do a single sale at, for a single day at the farmer's market. Um, our key activities is cutting lemons and serving drinks, getting it all organized. Our value proposition, what makes our lemonade so much better than anyone else's is that it's hand squeezed, fresh made, local ingredients. And then we sell these this lemonade to people, our customers at the farmer's market, okay, tourists and um, guests. And they receive this product via the channel of attending the farmer's market, and which is a weekly outdoor event uh, where people can rent out stands and sell their products to um, folks that come to visit it. And then our relationship is that we, um, you know, are on the farmer's market website. Our revenue stream, it works. You know, we sell a bunch of lemonades, 50 an hour, $4 a piece, bring in about 800 bucks. And from that, after we deduct our costs, we clear about $475. So we have a viable business, okay? We're, we're selling lemonade at the lemonade stand, okay? But is this a sustainable business? Is there something more that we can be doing with this other than just covering our costs? So here we have this idea from Eric Cooperstrom. We're in this together as a global community for everyone, from governments, businesses, civil society, and beyond. Everyone has to do their part. So this is where it comes in like, yeah, we can do enough, but can we do more, right? Can we be better? And this is our opportunity, especially as consumers, but also as business owners, um, to be able to build innovation into a business model that lets change take place across all sectors of an organization and realize value and growth opportunities all the way around. So when you're an entrepreneur starting a business, you have tremendous influence in how you use resources, what you're creating, who you're selling to, um, how you're generating revenue. And so these opportunities are also amazing opportunities to make a difference, to do things differently, to educate others, and we're gonna see what that all means. So that's where the sustainability lens comes in. And it's a tool that I created um, over 20 years um, after working with indigenous businesses, fair trade businesses, um, private companies in the US, in South America, um, you know, working with students, working with development economics. So all this kind of um, distilled together, basically influenced by four main theoretical principles. Okay, so the first thing that we have is Summa Kamana. And that came out of the and Andean ridge region, and it means living well. It's a Quechua term. It comes from indigenous knowledge. It's based on the Southern Cross, the constellation in the sky. And it's all about having a balance between wisdom, knowledge, love, um, the ancestors, the present. And it's not looking at life in a linear sense. As I begin my business, I end my business, I balance my books. But instead, it's looking at life as an interconnected spiral where we have the present is what's happening now. But the future is what you're thinking I'm going to say next, which just became our present, which now you heard me say it has now become our past. So we have this continual 
um, spiral that we're a part of that goes through us that connects us to everybody and everything. So, and it also includes the generations that aren't here yet, our children, our children's children, and our ancestors who have passed. So having the, this feeling and this sense of connection, and then also having this model of balance brings out many different ways to be thinking about how we make decisions. Okay. The other piece that we have in this is um, Circles of Sustainability. So that's a project from the United Nations Development Program that I worked on as a Fulbright Scholar in Bolivia doing um, research on rural quinoa producers and looking at their well-being. And it's a self-reported model, a self-reported tool where people are able to um, share with others what they think their well-being is based on elements of ecology, their natural environment, the culture, how they fit in, politics and the social structures around them, and the economics, okay? So carried out by stakeholders in the community study, this gives a voice to everybody, but it also gives a space for businesses to be able to be part of that voice, to respond to that voice, and to be included in those communities. Because the thing when we're looking at enterprises, you know, we don't work in a vacuum. You know, we're working with, with community. So we're selling goods and services that we're getting materials from somewhere. We're getting workers from somewhere. We're getting customers from somewhere. So we're constantly intermelding with these different communities. And that's where circles of sustainability is really important. Permaculture is where we're looking at nature systems. So if you think about abundance, right? You think about an apple tree. If an apple tree's sole purpose is to procreate, it can just produce a single apple with some seeds and it's done. But instead, nature does more than that. Okay, the trees are, are self-generating um, of energy, right? They're able to transfer um, sunlight into food. Okay, they also create flowers, which give an incentive for bees to help as workers for the tree because the trees need those flowers pollinated so they can make seeds in exchange for the work that the bees do. They give them um, nectar, right, that the bees can then make honey out of. So, so they have this currency. They have a means of exchange. They have attraction. They're bringing in outside people to help them achieve their final goal. They're also providing sustenance for other ecosystems and um, community members that might not be their immediate community, but can share the same environment. So for example, in the winter, when the leaves drop, the leaves become um, can be composted down, okay, and become nutrients again for the tree, but also becomes um, places for all kinds of microorganisms and insects to be able to live. And the apples themselves provide fruit for animals and other beings. So we have these multiple systems, right? And also by providing fruit for people and animals, the, the apples are taken away from the tree and the seeds can be planted elsewhere. So the tree is not competing with its own offspring. Okay, so all of this is idea of abundance, right? Doing more than what's needed, including other people, self-generating energy, um, creating new uses for waste, okay, are the ideas of permaculture that can influence our sustainability lens. And then the last piece is solidarity economy, where we're looking at multiple ways of exchange instead of monoculture of dollars, you know, only having dollars in order for or currency for trade. Um, how can we um, have the movement of goods and services happen in other ways? So here we're looking at volunteerism, we're looking at fair trade, organic, um, we're looking at, um, you know, sliding scale pricing, gifting, um, pay as you go or pay as you use. Uh, so lots of different opportunities here as we're going through a whole entire cycle of creation, production, exchange, consumption, and surplus allocation. Okay. So are we using disposable, um, reusable containers? Are we using, um, maybe local currencies? Are we using um, bulk purchasing and refillable containers? So all of these questions. So what I've done is I've distilled all of this down into four areas that make up the sustainability lens. Resources, health policy, and exchange. Okay. And I turned it into a game. Okay. And it's an easy game. It's a game that anybody can play. You can play it in a half an hour or you can spend an entire week or an entire semester playing it in much, much greater detail. 
Okay, so the game comes with a couple of um, simple pieces. We have our board, we have some cards, coins to help us out, a spinner, okay, and our playing cards, okay? And what happens when you get this game, um, even as somebody who's administering the game, they don't have to have a lot of experience because we have a booklet here that helps to explain how it works. And basically what we do is we take that initial lemonade stand that we just talked about and we make a pitch, right? And I have the script for you right here. And it says, you know, the lemonade stand produces um, lemonade for farmer's market participants um, by having it um, hand squeezed at the farmer's market. A uh, local product is made with um, maple syrup and lemons that are, you know, purchased at Costco. <laughs> and customers get our product by attending the farmer's market. And it costs $4. And it's, it costs us, um, I guess, about $2, right, to produce. And we sell it for $4. Okay. So there we have the beginning, the opening script of the game. Okay. And what happens from there is where the magic begins. So here we start applying aspects of the sustainability lens. So in general, when we're looking at resources, okay, we're taking that big lens, okay, and we're looking at resources. Resources is about where things come from. So now we're thinking about how are we making our purchasing decisions, okay, all the way down to the ground that the minerals are extracted from, the plastic is distilled out of, the wood is cut from, right, and who is touching that and who is involved and how are you buying it from them. So we're thinking about this. And then for health, we're thinking about the community, right? And we're thinking about our workers and do they have leadership and say, are we listening to them? Do they have places for participation? Um, are they included? Is our community included? So health gives us all these beautiful ways. It's the heart, you know, to really start connecting more um, with the workers and the community and even our suppliers. Okay, exchange is looking at how are people able to access what it is that we're creating. Okay, do we have multiple means of, um, of exchange, right? Can people get our lemonade um, by trading or by working for, for um, a lemonade? Or can they buy two lemonades and leave one as a coupon for someone else that doesn't have one? Or can they, um, you know, have a, coup have a lemonade coupon book that they get a discount if they buy, you know, 20 lemonade coupons for the price of 19. So all these different things are about exchange, okay? And it really creates a lot more opportunity for us as a business to reach out to different types of clients and also to diversify um, how people are able to access our product. And then the last thing we have is policy. So policy is you can do all these great things, but let people know about it. Okay, so model and advocate for greater sustainability, you know, let people know what's going on, invite customers to get involved. It's great for your social media. It's great for um, building additional sales. And it's just great for helping to, to contribute to a more sustainable way of being. Here's an example of some of the types of cards that you might find on the game. So this is a general introduction of what the four different domains are. But as you take the domains of the sustainability lens and start specifically putting them on the different areas of the business model canvas, okay, the business model canvas has nine main areas. So key activities, key partners, cost structure, channels, those are all part of those nine areas. So let's say we really get micro in how we're looking at this and we start thinking about where, what is the health in my key partners, right? Where can I build more heart? and people that are working with me that aren't a direct part of my business, okay? Because that's who key partners are. They're folks that give you some infrastructure, um, maybe advice, but they're not part of your business, okay? So how can I build a better relationship there or um, improve that area or improve how I'm looking at resources, right? The resources that are being used in my key activities, okay? So my key activities is what I'm making and doing. So what, what can I be doing when I look at the intersectionality of resources specifically within those key activities? So that's what the sustainability lens game does. It gives you that micro macro way of looking at businesses. And sometimes you might be like, oh my goodness, I have no idea. You know, I'm drawing a blank here. I'm not sure what to do. Okay. So that's where we have um, these additional pieces. So we have lifeline coins. So let's say you're like, I don't know what I can do. Um, this gives you ideas. So we have um, 35 different lifeline coins. 
interns and certified organic do-it-yourself sliding scale pricing to give people ideas if they get stuck on one of their cards and can't figure out an answer and then we also have a spinner so um the game is played with a dice so when you roll the dice you can end up on any one of the of the quadrants of the squares of the um business model canvas which is our playing board but you also can end up spinning okay and if you if you roll the spinner then you get to spin the spinner and here you get to address one of the 17 sustainable development goals with a possible solution or you even get to react to something that's happened it's your choice okay so maybe here you're recognized for your community service choose a key partners card cool okay so you get to do that so this kind of spices up the game a little bit gives you some more things to choose from okay and then moving along um what we have here is, is some of the inspiration behind where this game came about, right? So I've had a fair trade clothing company myself for many years. Um, I've been a certified B Corp as well. Um, I work with knitters down in the Andes Mountains. And, you know, my doctoral thesis was about them asking, Comercio Justo está Justo? Is fair trade fair? And that's kind of what <clears throat> set me down the path to um, really exploring development economics, well being and answering some of those really tough questions okay if we pop back to the game um what we have here is the board right so as we're, we're pulling these different cards and placing them on the board and solving these different areas we're also building a more sustainable resilient and fun organization so there's a couple of different ways to play this game one, this is the, the um, sort of the macro vision where we have just the general business model canvas cards. So they're just very big general feel cards. And you can play that in like 20 minutes, boom, 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 just go through the nine different quadrants. Or you can go through the micro level where you're looking more specific. You can also do it timed. Okay. And you have this um, solution sheet where you can start writing down your ideas as you're going through the different areas. Like let's say I'm on value proposition and I've come up with some idea for health, right? I can write that in. Or if I'm just doing the business, the BMC card, I would just have a solution for that entire area. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you can play the game depending on your needs and what you want to achieve and how much time you have and who your audience is. But um, here what we have is at the end, you finish the game by making the pitch and now you make a pitch that's 90 minutes, okay? So instead of that quick little lemonade i'm selling it now we're doing something more right so our lemonade stand produces the best most sustainable lemonade for and maybe we're gonna hit like a specific um clientele right so maybe it's for low-income residents or maybe it's for people um you know within a certain region and it gives back to right what does it give back to maybe i've decided to hire disadvantaged people in my organization so i'm creating more employment in areas that it's more needed Okay, maybe my products are now from organic lemons that I buy from a family that I have a relationship with, and I know that my direct buying from them is helping to support their children and their better well-being, right? Maybe now, instead of it just being maple syrup, it's maple syrup from the farm down the block from me. So now I'm bringing in local business and including local people as part of my organization. Maybe customers have the option to buy one, give one. So I can get maybe um, if I pay $6 for my lemonade, I'm buying one for myself and half of one for someone else in the community. Okay. Maybe I have um, interns working with me, college students, high school students, so they can learn some business skills. <coughs> At the same time, I can get some work done. Okay. So how has my business now become more, more integrated with the community, more integrated with the suppliers? Um, celebrating and creating opportunity for other people in my community who have had less opportunities? What kind of sustainable development goals am I now um, supporting? Okay, I might be supporting education. I might be supporting food. I might be supporting um, sustainable consumption. Okay, so all of these things, as I'm going through the sustainable development game, I'm also creating um, opportunities to advance the sustainable development goals okay so this game can be used in classrooms okay here i am at landmark college um, with my students okay it can also be used in rural environments so here we are working with the quinoa community um, having a discussion about different areas of development themselves 
Okay. And this game is based on two books that I have written. Um, the first one, The Cultural and Political Intersection of Fair Trade and Justice, kind of um, looks at that whole story of fair trade and really deconstructs that and looks at it from a cultural, historical, economic perspective and place-based. So it's really in, in examining Bolivia and examining the fair trade infrastructure that's developed there and um, the benefits and challenges that it's brought to the people. And then um, Social Entrepreneurship as Sustainable Development is the book behind the sustainability lens. So this is the, the, the text that has all of the explanation and examples that have led to the creation of this game. Okay, and so what we're looking at now are next steps is the game is out it's kind of new it, it'll be produced the end of october and um we're looking partner for partners to test out the game we can do this virtual online we have these workshops um, we also are looking for um, ways to include this game as part of a social entrepreneurship curricula so i'll be doing that with my students and i'll have curricula to share with people my students are neurodiverse which means they have dyslexia autism ADHD. So all of the curricula I create is multimodal and universal design. So that means that people can access it many different ways, um, verbally, um, visually, audit, audit, audibly. Okay. Um, I'm also looking to eventually develop an app for this and any other ideas folks might have. So keep in touch with me. I'm right here, tamrasten at landmark.edu.